Hi, I'm Keith Melton, the president of Cane Masters. Each week at our headquarters, we often receive one or two inquiries asking, do we put swords inside canes? Or perhaps do we put shotguns or pistols or tear gas or other things? And the answer is we don't. But in this video, I'd like to explain why. Historically, going back to the 17th century, it became very common for gentlemen to carry a cane that also had a knife inside. Or this is a dirk or short, or it could have a full sword. Now, this is the only one I happen to have in the shop. It is not one that we produce, but you see it has a very garish 50 caliber shell on the top, and it certainly would call nothing but attention. But the logic in the 17th century was many people used and needed canes. So if you were going to carry a cane, why not carry one that appeared normal, but then have a concealed blade inside? So you'd have the advantage of using the sword cane for mobility, but also if you were threatened, you could quickly draw a sword. And in theory, it worked. From a coolness factor, this is a standard cane, very functional, but this is a sword cane. Often it can appear very similar to a standard cane, but you always know that you've got a James Bond style device inside. You can open it, you can recover your blade, and though this is a short dirk, it could be useful as a full blade. So I think it's clear that the sword cane wins hands down when it comes to coolness. If we measure them on effectiveness, it gets a bit more interesting. Though it's possible for a person to use a concealed blade effectively, and in this design is a dirk, it does presuppose that the bad guy has gotten close enough to you that you're having to defend yourself, and as such you need a stabbing blade. Um, in theory, that works well. Perhaps as you grow older, it becomes less practical, uh, and it's not necessarily an advantage. A good training cane or a carry cane that you know how to use gives you the advantage of engaging with a bad guy four to five feet away. And as we age, most of the people who may be attacking us are probably going to be one-third to one-fourth our age, and presumably stronger. So anything we can do to get a, keep a bad guy away, give us time to escape, withdraw, contact authorities, we want to do that. But if we're forced to defend ourselves, even though a sword cane could strike a lethal blow, you're much better off with an effective cane that you've been trained with, because number one, it's not necessarily lethal. You, your goal is never to hurt someone. It's only to protect yourself. And if you can disable someone to the point that they can no longer hurt you, then you can retire and call authorities. So if we measure on effectiveness and we say that you have been trained with a cane, a good standard cane that we produce straight for mobility is going to be far more effective than a sword cane that you probably never train with and you seldom use access or availability. For individuals that carry concealed weapons, and of course with a permit, the interesting time is the length of time it takes you to clear the concealment, draw your weapon, and prepare to engage to a bad guy, someone that's threatening your life. And that access time is usually about two seconds. Now with training it may be a little less, average person probably is closer to three seconds. Why that's important is that someone that's trying to attack you or threatens your life can in two seconds cover 22 feet. The challenge is you spot a threat 22 feet away, they can technically be on top of you and it would literally be a draw if you had to try to remove a concealed carry weapon to defend yourself. Now immediately you have the advantage of a cane. A cane is instantly accessible. 
It's always in your hand. You can have it into position and be defending yourself in a fraction of a second. Now let's look at a sword cane. It's in your hand all the time. I can press a detent and I can remove the blade. Can I do it quickly? Well, if you choreograph the movement and if you practice it daily, you could. But the challenge is the detent. The same mechanism that keeps the blade inside the, the shaft or the scabbard that holds it securely has to be released before you're prepared to engage a bad guy. And you've got to know where that detent is. You've got to be able to press it. You've got to be able to remove it and do this under pressure as somebody's trying to hurt you. And it's quite a challenge. I don't know of a single instance in which an individual has effectively defended themselves with a sword cane in the last 200 years. There may be one, but I'm certainly not aware of it. So if you say, which is most accessible? Well, a good wooden self-defense cane wins hands down. Either a good self-defense cane or a sword cane probably are about the same with mobility. The one disadvantage to a sword cane could be that the additional weight of a strong scabbard and a blade may make it a bit heavier and sometimes less convenient to maneuver. But functionally, I think you have to say it's a tie. Both of them, especially if the sword cane had a traditional J-top handle, both of them would be excellent for mobility and I think about equal. Concealment. There's nothing really concealed on a self-defense cane. We say everything is in plain sight. Bystanders see a cane and they may notice the beautiful woodwork, the beautiful color, how wonderfully it's finished, it's very elegant. 99.99% .99 of the people will never ever see it anything beyond that. The fact that you understand the features of the horn and why it's pointed and very useful. You understand the grips on the crook, why it makes it very effective for handling and maneuvering, why you need the top grips, what a rumble strips are good for in raking an opponent, or a teardrop edge, a striking edge on the bottom. These are things that are known to individuals that have practiced and trained with a cane. But for everyone else, they're essentially unknown and invisible. Well, the same thing's probably true with a sword cane. It can be as plain as it can be, especially if this was wood and had a regular J-top type. So again, I think that both canes effectively conceal their true capabilities. Canes are wonderful in the sense that I can do so many things with it from a figure eight spin to using the shaft to different forms of strikes, a bad guy can pretty quickly see that he's not sure what this is, but as he hears it spin by his head about 100 miles an hour, he doesn't want any part of that. A sword cane is a bit different, especially if you perhaps lack training, because essentially you're threatening to either stab someone or not stab them. And your tendency to have to go to a potentially lethal movement, it doesn't give you much wiggle room. You either need to, they see it and they say, I don't want any part of that, and they run away, which is very possible. But if they come at you, you're potentially striking with a lethal blow. So when it comes to intimidation, I'd say that, that seeing a blade is always more intimidating than just a regular wooden cane. So if we say which is most intimidating, I'd have to give the edge to a sword cane. Though from a practical standpoint, a wooden self-defense cane gives me many more options. Legality. There are hundreds of laws within the United States that specifically cover the legality of carrying a sword cane. In some states, California, New York, Massachusetts, they are specifically prohibited. In other states, it's considered a form of a 
concealed weapon. And if you have a concealed carry permit, you can certainly carry a sword cane or many other improvised tools if you would like. But where you have a cane, canes are covered under the Americans with Disability Act. You have a right to carry a cane with you anytime, anywhere. If I carry a sword cane, and depending on my state, I may be able to legally carry it. But I can't carry it on a flight. I can't carry it in federal buildings. I can't carry it uh, in places that specifically prohibit any type of weapon because a sword cane is a weapon, by definition a weapon. A defensive cane is by definition a mobility tool. I can carry my personal protection cane with me anytime, anywhere, and I'm covered by the Americans with Disability Act. It's recognized internationally, and I travel with my canes uh, in my daily life around the world several times a year. So if you compare the two, sword cane, a personal protection cane, there is a clear and uncontested winner with a personal protection cane. In summary, if I look at all the advantages and disadvantages, certainly we want to give to the edge to a sword cane in coolness. It is cool, it does have that James Bond flair to it, and it's one that only you know. The challenge is that most individuals never ever train with a sword cane. You never practice deploying it. You don't know how to use it. It feels good to carry, but it's probably more of a good luck talisman than it is an effective tool. A wooden personal protection cane gives you great mobility and with some, some minimal training is a very effective defensive tool. If we compare all of the pluses and minuses that we've just discussed, the clear winner is a self-defense cane.